This is the third video in the 10-part Login to Firebase with SwiftUI playlist series. In this video, we're going to begin to flush out our login view by adding in the sign in with email, sign up with email, and forgot password views. In this video, we'll concentrate on the top portion, which is the login form with three buttons. The forgot password button will present a modal sheet that will allow the user to enter a password to request a password reset. The login button will make the login request. And the sign up button will present another modal form that will ask for information to be used for the sign up. Now, this isn't a course on building a Swift UI, so I'm assuming that those viewing this will be able to build this on their own. So, in order to make this tutorial easier to understand and move quickly, I've created the required files that you can add to the project, and we'll go through them in detail. So make sure you download the resources for this tutorial from the link provided in the notes below. To keep our code separated from the view, I'm going to use a user view model where we can perform all of our checks to make sure that the data entered is valid. So from the downloaded resources, drag the user view model.swift file into your project making sure that you choose copy items if needed. The user view model has variables for all of the different properties that we will find in our forms, but also will map to the properties that we will use to log in to create our user. There are also a number of functions and computed properties that will check the validation of the entries and return a corresponding string if the validation fails. These four functions run standard sign up or login checks. Do the passwords match? Is the field empty? Is this a valid email? Do the passwords match our minimum requirements? Following this are computed properties. The first checks to see if all of our checks have passed and if so returns true. And this check will be used to either enable or disable the sign up button on the sign up form. The button will only be enabled if all of our checks pass. The next checks to see if the email and password fields have values before enabling the login button on the sign in form. And the remaining properties are computed properties that will return an empty string or some text related to the validation failure. And these texts are used in the signup form to provide user feedback. This will make much more sense when we look at our authentication views in more detail. But first, I like to organize my code so that I can easily navigate my project. And for this project, I'm going to create the following structure. I'm going to create a new group called Firebase. And within that group, I'm going to create three more one called Views, one called Firestore, and one called Auth. I'm also going to rearrange the order, but that's not required. So drag the user view model file into the Auth folder, and drag the login view into the Views folder. And we're going to add the other three required files for the login views here as well. So return to the resources folder that you downloaded and drag the remaining three views into the views folder, making sure you choose copy if needed. The final structure should look something like this. First thing we're going to do is adjust our login view. We're going to remove the environment object because we're not going to need it here as we are going to be using the views that we've added to deal with the user info. This view will present one of two modal sheets depending on whether or not the action is to reset the password or sign up as a new user. To determine which one to present, we can create an enum and we'll call it action with two cases, sign up and reset password. To trigger the presentation of this sheet, we're going to use two state variables, one that will enable the sheet presentation 
and one that will determine which action to take. And we're going to bind both of these properties to the sign in view so that when we change it there, it will present the sheet on top of this login view. So what we can do now is in the body of our view here, we'll remove the login button and replace it with a call to that sign in with email view. And then finally, we can add the sheet modifier to this view. The modal will differ depending on the action selected. So we can say that if the action is sign up, we'll present the sign up view. Else the action must be the reset password. So let's present the forgot password view. Before we test it out, let's take a look at those three new views that we added. The sign in with email view has the following components. There's the environment object where we'll be storing our user information and authentication state. The user view model that we went over so that we can handle our verifications. And two bound variables that we received from login view so that the selected modal can be presented on top of the login view. The body itself is a standard VStack with two text fields, one for email address and a secure one for the password. There's a button to toggle the modal forgot passwords view and set the correct action that is bound to our login view and also sets the show sheet to true. There's another button that will perform the login, which we will get to in another video. And the opacity is determined by our validation state, which is simply that there's data in both fields. It is also disabled if the validation is not true. This is followed by a button that will trigger the sign up sheet by setting the appropriate action and setting show sheet to true. The sign up view has these components. There's the environment object where we'll be storing our information and authentication state and the user view model to do our verifications, just like in the sign in with email view. There's also a presentation mode environment variable so our dismiss button can dismiss the modal. And this is followed by a navigation view containing a VStack. Inside the VStack, we group all four of our fields. Each one has either a text field or a secure field, followed by a red text field that will display the computed text based on our user view model validation criteria. On presentation, all values are failed, so text is entered in each one. Following that is the register button that we still need to code. And as with login, the opacity is determined by our validation state and also is disabled if the validation is false. And finally, we display the sign up title in the navigation bar and a trailing button item that will dismiss the modal should we not wish to drag down to dismiss the sheet. The forgot password view is even simpler. There's the user view model, so we can do our verification on the email field and a presentation mode environment variable, again, to allow us to dismiss the sheet with our dismiss button. The body is just a navigation view with a text field for email, followed by a button that is at full capacity when enabled, only if the email field is a valid email. The action is yet to be completed. And finally, we display the reset title in the navigation bar and a trailing button item that will dismiss the modal should we not wish to drag down to dismiss the sheet. So let's run and test. The screen that's presented will depend on what value our environment objects user is user authenticated value is. In our case, we set it to signed out in our user info. Remember? Don't worry about the positioning of this login stack, as we will fix that once we add in the sign in with Apple view. As you see, our buttons are disabled on login until we enter an email and password. On the sign up screen, as we enter valid information, the error fields disappear and eventually 
the register button is enabled. And the same thing happens on the forgot password sheet. The button's opacity is lower and disabled until we have a valid email. Well, that's enough for this video. In the next one, we'll add our sign in with Apple view. Videos for this series are being posted as they're created. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to be notified when new ones are posted. Not only for this playlist, but for all of my Swift UI videos.